Hello and welcome to The Shipyard, a series where I try and build a spaceship in Blender. Today, the cargo container. Now, I don't know if this cargo container is canonically removable, but I think it's a no-brainer to make it so. During the course of the first game and its expansions, we have Draymans serving as hospital ships, as uh, tankers, as regular freight vessels, and as troop carriers. Oh, and as couriers. So to me it makes sense that the loadout for all those different purposes will be very different, and that this modular cargo container at the back probably takes many different forms, but fits into the same rough form factor. So this thing is clearly detachable. Okay, so what's our best real-world analogy for this? Well, it's got to be the shipping container. These things are a standard size, they're moved around the world by just about every different form of transport. Road, rail, sea? Okay, I guess maybe not air. If we can bring in some of the visual aspects of a shipping container into this thing, it will be immediately obvious to the viewer that this is a cargo container. Okay, the most notable uh, visual feature of a shipping container is the corrugated metal sides. Now, why does it have these when something like um, a truck trailer, which has a similar size and purpose, have sheet metal sides? Well, the obvious reason, it's for rigidity. Because these shipping containers have to bear many times their own weight. They stack vertically. So having these thick corrugated metal sides makes them rigid. They don't crumple. Now, I don't know if the Drayman cargo containers stack. Um, they're the size of a four-story building, so maybe they don't, but they are large. And a larger object will experience greater forces in acceleration and maneuvering. So I think it makes sense from an in-world design perspective to have this sort of corrugated look to it as well. Anyway, this is what I've come up with after learning a few of the basic modeling techniques in Blender. I've taken the tapered cuboid design, the very straightforward geometry of the original thing, and I've added these corrugations here around uh, the front to back axis of the container. On top of that, I cloned the object and created a frame around it to create these this network of braces around the outside. I think this makes sense from a cargo container perspective because you would want your structural elements on the outside of a cargo container to maximize the internal space. The geometry is not perfect, there's some flaws in it, there's some asymmetry in there, there's stuff going on here and here um, that really uh, could do with being cleaned up, but it is more or less okay at a distance. Now here at the front of the container, I think we need to have an access port for a connector with the main ship hull. If we have people in the cargo container, well, not necessarily this cargo container, but a, a different kind of container, then there's going to have to be some means of attaching the main ship to it for connecting up various atmospheric systems and for crew egress and ingress. I've made the container this brownish colour, which it was in the original game, but on the original sprites there were these sort of garish um, decals on there that I'm, you can't really see what they're supposed to be, but I didn't like the look of those and I haven't recreated them. What I have done is put a serial number on the side. I think that makes sense for a cargo container, having a prominent marked serial number. I also started to play around with some procedural texturing. So if we switch to the rendered view, uh, you can see if we zoom right in, uh, we have a sort of, sort of galvanized metal look. There's a slight shine to it, not much. Of course, we're much further in than we would be at any point of rendering this model, so it doesn't look that detailed, but it's going to be good enough from a distance. But on the edges here, I've tried to break it down into a sort of shinier and more worn um, texture to basically just give it a wear and tear look. Now, this was uh, just my first venture into um, texturing and cycles, and, uh, you know, it certainly could be better, I think, Oh, also, uh, you can't really see it on, on here, but if I switch to the solid, you may see um, that I've also added um, a very minor displacement across the entire mesh, just to break up these straight lines a little bit. They're a little more wonky than that. Um, maybe I can crank them up, actually. It might not be high enough. Um, okay, so if we double the strength, and uh, let's see how that's gonna render. 
let's take that. You see, now we're what we're doing here is um, is just sort of changing the amount by which this um, very geometric mesh is uh, is perturbed. Um, that might be too much. Let's uh, look at what that looks like rendered. And you can see now that there are more bumps and dents. That's uh, a little too much there. I'm going to crank it down, I think, to maybe 0 0.3. 0 0.03. But that's just adding some more geometric imperfection that will make it look imperfect and worn. And I think to a reasonable degree, that has been accomplished with this cargo container now. Um, it's not perfect in terms of its geometry or in terms of its texturing, but it is good enough for something that isn't intended to really be a hero model anyway. I'm happy to call this cargo container complete. Okay, in the next episode we're going to deal with this here, all this stuff, the stuff that connects the engines and the cargo container to the main hull. The next thing I'm going to try and do is design and recreate those. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.